To prologue or not to prologue? That is the question. Many writing coaches, publishers and literary agents will advise you against including a prologue in your novel. And yet many of the most successful stories do include iconic prologues. That includes George R. R. Martin's A Game of Thrones. In this video, we're going to cover what a prologue actually is, what makes a good prologue, and why the prologue of A Game of Thrones is pretty much perfect. Some mild spoilers ahead for A Game of Thrones, Lord of the Rings, 2001 A Space Odyssey, and Star Wars. So what is a prologue, and how is it different to any other opening chapter of a book? Well, to answer that, let's first take a look at all the things the opening of any story would ideally do. Introduce the protagonist. Set up the main premise or conceit of the story. Do some world building. Provide a hook to get the audience interested. Provide an honest promise of the type of story to come. If we can do the vast majority of those things in a single scene or chapter, we don't need a prologue. But what if, for example, your story is filled with high stakes action, adventure and magic, but your protagonist starts off in a more mundane setting? Well, that's when a prologue might make sense. Let's look at some examples. The Lord of the Rings movies start with a prologue in which the free peoples of Middle-earth battle against Sauron. In the books, one of the first things we get is the Ringverse, a poem which gives us an introduction to the Dark Lord and his titular One Ring. Without these prologues, we'd be left with a really slow-paced opening in the Shire, which wouldn't really reflect the action and adventure to come. If you want more analysis of the Ringverse, you can find it here. Both Stanley Kubrick and Arthur C. Clarke opened 2001 A Space Odyssey, with proto-human apes having their evolutionary path influenced by a mysterious monolith. This sets up the main premise of the story by introducing the true nature of the monoliths long before the main characters will come across them. Star Wars opens with a space battle. This scene introduces Darth Vader and the Death Star plans. It provides a great hook, much better than starting with Luke doing chores on his aunt and uncle's farm. So in simple terms, a prologue, whether it's called that or not, is an opening chapter which sets up the book without introducing the protagonist. All the great prologues I just mentioned do this really well. So why is this video focusing in on a Game of Thrones in particular? What makes that prologue so perfect? Well, let's take a look. Three Night's Watchmen are ranging north of the wall. One of them, Will, has discovered a camp of dead wildlings, and they argue about whether to investigate it further or head for safety. The young lordling, Sir Waymar Royce, little more than a boy, mocks the more experienced Garrod. Do the dead frighten you? Are you unmanned by the dark? This introduces us to the social structures of Westeros and the theme of social class. As the argument progresses and Will contemplates going back to the wildling camp, he recalls the old stories and the haunted forest. This hints at the mystical elements of the world. Finally, Royce decides they will investigate the wildling camp and then the big moment arrives. The Night's Watchmen are attacked by the others, or White Walkers as they're called on the show. Royce battles these strange beings of darkness and ice, but is slaughtered. In a moment of delicious dramatic irony, Will is strangled by Royce's reanimated corpse. The dead and the dark should indeed brighten you. So the Game of Thrones prologue does all the things a great prologue should. Everything that my other examples did, and it does them very well. It sets up the main premise of the story, and not just for this novel, but the whole series. The coming of winter and the others. It does some world building, with mentions of the wall, the Night's Watch, class conflict, and the old stories. It provides a hook to get the audience interested with that tremendous battle against the others. It provides an honest promise of the type of story to come by introducing the dark fantasy elements of the series and the kind of grim character death it's known for. Nobody is safe in Westeros. On top of that, it's superbly well written. It's a concise, self-contained story with some of Martin's best prose. But that's not all. There's something else which makes it so perfect. It's essential. 
A key ingredient of a prologue is that the book actually needs a prologue. Chapter 1 of A Game of Thrones, while great in its own right, would miss out a lot of the key things an opening chapter should do. Without this prologue, we'd barely see the others until Sam kills one in The Storm of Swords, book 3 of the series. In fact, we'd barely see any of the dark fantasy elements of the series in book 1, other than a couple of notable exceptions in Daenerys and Jon's chapters. A Game of Thrones needed a prologue, and George R. R. Martin delivered perfectly. He made it even better by immediately introducing Ned Stark and his sons in the next chapter, completing a perfect opening. Having a prologue is, by definition, a compromise. It means giving up the chance to introduce your protagonist up front, in exchange for being able to introduce other elements of your story more quickly. That's why to prologue or not to prologue is such an important question for any writer. So, if you're starting on writing a new story, and you're wondering if you should include a prologue, ask yourself these questions. Number one, can I have the best of both worlds and do everything a good opening should do in a single chapter or scene? Number two, if I start from a prologue, how long before I can introduce my protagonist? Number three, if I start with chapter one with my protagonist, how long before I can introduce everything else that matters? Number four, what's the trade-off? What's the best compromise? And finally, number five, if I do use a prologue, how do I make it really memorable so readers are glad it's there? So what do you think? Does A Game of Thrones have a perfect prologue? Are there any great prologues I missed? Leave a comment below, and if you enjoyed this video, please do hit like and subscribe. I have plenty more George R. R. Martin content planned, so make sure you don't miss out. See you next time, and keep writing.